Good. Okay, so we are on book four, number 11. The impressions being held together by cause, effect, basis, and support, they disappear with the disappearance of these four. And then there's no commentary in Pantagelli, so I'm going to go to this one, Carrera. <clears throat> who says the vasanas being held together by cause, effect, basis, and support disappear with the disappearance of these four. This sutra examines the factors that bind vasanas to the individual. If we know what keeps vasanas operative, impelling us to take birth after birth, we can find a way to break the chain reaction of cause and effect which binds us. Cause, ignorance is the root of all subconscious impressions. And then he lists related sutras, 2.3 and 2.4, which discuss ignorance. Effect, the fruit of our ac actions. The related sutra is 2.14. The karmas bear fruits of pleasure and pain caused by merit and demerit. Basis, the mind, which is the storehouse for all impressions, and support, the existence of external objects that stimulate the mind to form re Ritis. Now that we know what holds vasanas together, how do we make them disappear? Ignorance is the cause for the continuing existence of vasanas and the root of all obstacles. By overcoming ignorance through meditation and samadhi, we overcome the limitation of vasanas. See sutras 2.10 and 2.11. In their subtle form, these obstacles can be destroyed by resolving them back into their original cause the ego. In the active state, they can be destroyed by meditation. The next six sutras offer a fascinating glimpse into the nature of sense objects, their relationship to time, and the fact that they exist independently of an individual's perception of them. So I really did look at this and I thought about it, and I feel, you know, as I said before, that my mind is kind of like oatmeal, and I'm having trouble sorting through this, because while each of these things taken separately makes sense, I don't know exactly how they all fit together, except that he says, if you can break through these four cause, effect, basis, and support, then you're breaking through to a different level of awareness or a different plane or a different level of understanding at least. Mm -hmm. So help. <laughs> <clears throat> yeah. I think we should keep reading the six he's talking about, no? Go through to the six? Yeah. Okay, should I stay in Carrera or go back to Pantajali? Oops, stay in Carrera. He's so illuminating. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay, so 412. The past and future exist as the essential nature of Prakriti to manifest perceptible changes in an object's characteristics. All potential forms of an object are within it from its inception. They exist within it as latent seeds. The previous forms of an object dissolve into the past and become dormant potentialities. The future form of an object will be the manifestation of an object's intrinsic characteristics that express according to the conditions in its environment and the external forces that act upon it. The full grown oak tree rest in the acorn, as does the old disease tree that will be cut down for making mulch. Yet within the mature oak, the seed hides waiting to appear. The seed carries within it the essence of the past, its familial predecessors, and the potentialities for all future manifestations. Contemplating this sutra can help foster non-attachment. Our beautiful, reliable new car has hidden within it the old dented jalopy in need of constant repair. <laughs> it, 
enough said. <laughs> it will manifest under the influence of time, environment, and circumstance. Anything new will someday be old and will express different qualities due to its age. <clears throat> Sorry. <clears throat> Contemplating this sutra can help foster non-attachment. Our beautiful, reliable new car has hidden within it the old dented jalopy in need of constant repair. It will manifest under the influence of time, environment, and circumstance. Anything new will someday be old and will express different qualities due to its age. And just as only a mature tree can pass on its genes to a new generation, what is aged today helps bring forth what is new tomorrow. The message is, it is wise not to hold on tightly to anything. Allow nature to do her work and experience the beauty inherent in the flow of life. The related sutra is 355, describes the direct perception of this phenomenon. Should I go on? Oh, which sutra is this? This, what I just read was 412. 412. Uh, let me see what, this is very deep. Let me see what, um, you know, as far as says. Past and future are in the here and now. All the characteristics, forms, memories, deep impressions, etc., exist in the here and now whether in active or potential forms, the appearance or pa of past and future comes from the condition after order in which they're sequenced. A photo album of each of the photographs of people in a small community or extended family. Imagine that there are also photographs of numerous places. Now imagine that you arrange those in a photo album along with written captions. The way you arrange the photo album and the words you chose for the captions would determine the nature of the past as well as of the future. It is a matter of arranging the here and now photo album. This is the way the mind sorts its memory of the future to experience the absolute reality, self, or consciousness. It's to change by full process. Westworld. You just has anyone up. seen it? Oh, my phone's acting funky today. Can you guys hear me? It was breaking up. Oh, it was breaking up the whole time. Yeah, now part, you're clear. Part of the time it was. He's talking about if you sit down and you make a photo album, and you put all the photos in an arranged order and then you put the captions in and he said this process is like stopping the whole process of sitting down and arranging photographs in your photo album if that makes sense since i didn't read the whole thing to you ever you didn't hear it mm. he He's says like, it's you like know, you put them in an the order and, in a sequence yeah, like this process stops that where and it's making me think of um of Westworld. Do you, do you know the HBO series? Mm -hmm. Have you, you guys seen it? Yeah. No. It's like a dystopian a dystopian nightmare with the AI. Which is probably like the next phase of twenty twenty. Right. AI takes <laughs> over and Great. good to know. Like something about that whole show is very interesting in like the exploration of what is because you have these scientists trying to build um, a self-perpetuating natural consciousness into machines and the way their memories work is they can't differentiate between the past and the now like this sequence there's no sequence for them like they can remember something that happened in the past as though it's happening in the present, like perfect recollection. Mm -hmm. And I always think of like humans, the problem with creating the photo album is we sort of distort it. It's like you can't have perfect recollection unless you have um, 
one of those rare minds that has photographic memory, but most people don't. Most people are putting things out of order. They're putting it according to their own perception, um, their own samskaras. I feel like a love is, is um, actually incorrect perception when he's saying stopping the process of making the photo album. But it also feels like this mind-blowing statement where like what I was talking about yesterday, like time isn't actually a real thing. Right. All of it, because this all happened. Like the, if you look at the oak tree, the seed is in there and like the decaying death of the oak tree is in there. It's all a part of the same thing. That's amazing. <laughs> well, one of the other things that's interesting is, you know, the image of the oak tree is, is a, an image of a very circular kind of fixed pattern. Mm -hmm. And, and uh, the only place where time really exists is very locally. So if you have a very small sphere um, and there are interactions going on locally, then there is some commonality of time, but even that's not common. So even when we are, it, it, it is time, it, it, even us sitting here and we're sharing, we're reading the same thing, we're, we're all attuned to Zoom, et cetera, et cetera. Um, we all feel like we're experiencing now when the reality is none of us are really experiencing now if there is a now and there's probably not a now. And all of us are not experiencing the same now, even if we're thinking about it. So it, it's, it's uh, it, and the, the bottom line is that the reason why we think like that and why we think about the flow of time and we tend to think linearly instead of circularly is that that's how our mind is constructed. That's even how our neurons are constructed. And, and so that, uh, you know, you are what you eat, you know, and you can think within the direction and the planes that your brain allows you to think it's very tough to think outside of those direction and outside of those planes. But so I, you know, before you got on, Amanda, yeah. I was telling me, Shaleen, that my brain isn't together enough today to talk about, you know, to even, you know, really seriously talk about some of the things mm -hmm. that I've been reading about current research and time and brain research and that kind of thing. But it's, yeah. it's very interesting. I was telling my husband this morning, it's, the, the researchers I've been reading all refer to Western, the Western history of, of, of time. So, you know, for example, Aristotle said time is just, you know, looking at a series of changes, <coughs> not a thing. Whereas Newton said, no, it's a thing. It's a real thing. Well, Newton was wrong. You know, I mean, Einstein proved that Newton was wrong. Mm -hmm. um, and Aristotle had it closer. But nobody talks about the Eastern philosophers or the... Uh, what comes out of some of what's the background of some of the sutras <laughs> oh yeah which is interesting and and i have to do further research there because there's a lot of history there i mean this like you said this is thousands of years old this all comes out of somewhere well they say it's like the um it's like the primordial whisperings that's what is argued sometimes that like yoga doesn't like you know some teachers will say like oh yoga started five thousand years ago my teachers say there was no start time to yoga as soon as the universe was created yoga yoga was predates that mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but not in like a biblical way right it's like a uh what is really the definition of yoga that we've learned from studying these sutras the definition of yoga is is like just identifying with the source so that's existed and then all the once you identify with source all this knowledge comes and that's what they codified for us but what you said just blew my mind like like is time time it's like does the tree fall in the woods if nobody's there to hear it is time real if nobody's there to perceive it Right. But since time is a construct that comes out of interactions, it's not a thing. Right. So to ask the question, is time real? 
uh, is to say, I don't, I don't have a really good analogy. The first thing that springs to mind is, is breathing real. Well, we breathe, you know, and, and, and our bodies move in a certain way so that there's an interaction with some of the stuff that's coming in and going out and that kind of thing. But is there a thing that is a thing that you can set aside objectively that's breathing? And the answer is no. Oh. There's not actually a whole lot of things that can be set aside and objectified because <laughs> it's all interactions. No perception. Yeah, well, yes, yeah. The interaction, the events and the processes are real. The objects as some idealized form that you could set aside and put into some cosmic museum are not. <laughs> right, that's why it's illusory. Yeah. <laughs> well, you know, considered illusory. Yeah. You know what you had me thinking about, Sue? How we, um, because we perceive everything through, and Amanda, you said like some scars and whatever we're going through, through, when we're in something, when you're somewhere that's uncomfortable, time, the same time, five minutes feels like an hour. Yet, when you're doing something that feels good, an hour feels like five minutes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, there's all sorts of, uh, there's or all sorts of uh, time very time perception variabilities and and there's all sorts of uh, neur uh, neurological underpinnings for why that happens and how that happens um, but it's you know it's it's a it's such an interesting concept I mean time can be about ordering and sequencing um, what's interesting uh, and there's all different factors of what we call time. And I think one of the problems with time, and one of the researchers I was reading says this, is uh, the way that we use language and the concepts of time and language. Uh, to me, it reflects how complex it is um, and, and how, uh, how many different perceptions, how many different uh, kinds of time we have. But it also makes it much harder to talk about. But um, I, st I started, I was going to go somewhere with this, but I forgot. I told Micheline this morning my mind is oatmeal. It's, it's, <laughs> you know, it's here, but it's still pretty mushy. Well, you're getting some interesting points across. <laughs> yeah. Well, at some point, maybe I'll be more coherent with it. That would be nice, wouldn't it? But it's fascinating stuff. And, and I keep on, I, the more I think about it, the more I think about it, the, the, the brain, our brain is, is nothing more than a sieve and an organizer of interactions in space and, and we apply time to it. And space itself doesn't really exist either, but it's, we think of it as a thing. And we apply time to it and somehow we make it through our lives, our wonderful, complicated lives. Because so how, would emotions make, in there. <laughs> how would we make it through our lives if we didn't apply time to it? So it's kind of a necessity, isn't it? I mean, we, how, how could we? What would, <laughs> how would we, what would, how, how would that, what would it look like to function without the concept of time? Pure love. Hmm. What did you say? Pure love. I've always heard that, like the spiritual communities, they say, when you exit your body and you exit, you know, Maya or illusion and you're just spirit for a minute before you reincarnate, that you vibrate it such a high frequency of love that there's no there's no concept of suffering or the relational or any it's just like a very high vibration <laughs> that's what you what you said just made me think of that you know one of the things that i was reading said asked that same question well if there isn't time as we understand it and know it uh then how do we how do we think 
about ourselves and living and, and, and the world and that kind of thing. And he didn't say pure love, but what he did say is, you talk about the natures of the, the interactions that you have and you take it moment by moment and you, you study those things moment by moment, which um, is different than pure love and a change in vibration. On the other hand, it means attending to the nature of the vibrations that you're currently experiencing mm. at the moment or that you're looking at at the moment, understanding that they change all the time and that you are changing them and they are changing you. And it's, uh, to me, that's just plain really nifty. And it stands in such contrast to uh, some very fundamentalist uh, Christian groups believe firmly that the earth was created, what, 7,000 years ago? I mean, that there is a specific timeline and they, and they believe that it exists out there outside of us. It doesn't matter what we believe or what we do, that, it, that timeline exists. And you might as well build a cement monument to it because that's how, how fixed it is. And there's such, such a contrast to that. And it makes you wonder about babies and toddlers and... Uh, their perception of time. Because I, I, I'm sure somebody's done ex developmental experiment, ex you know, experiments, you know, developmental psychologists somewhere must have done some experiments. Um, babies could definitely sequence, they definitely know cause and effect from, from birth and, it, and you know, in a, in a very concrete way. But I'm wondering how they think about time. Right. I mean, at the beginning now, Isabella understands past, present, and future, but I guess maybe a year ago, she, she didn't. No. It was like, she has this insane memory. I don't know if she has a photographic memory, but like a year later, she would go to the same place now that she has all the verbal skills and she'd like... Like she'd go to um, the house she was at a year ago and she would remember that this was where the toys were. Mm -hmm. And it's like not registering that the toys aren't still there. It was like so bizarre. We went to um, my sister's um, boyfriend's house for her birthday and we hadn't been there since the year prior when we went to the pool there. And she remembered every single thing about the experience from last year, like it was still happening now. Like it wasn't processing that the, you know, this wasn't here anymore. It's just like so bizarre. She does that all the time. Mm -hmm. And I know other toddlers don't do it. I really think she has a photographic memory. Her aunt was telling me that she used to have one. So I think she might have gotten it from Mark's side of the family. But like her memory is insane. Except there's like not that time thing. Like she's starting to get it now but it makes me think of the robots <laughs> i remembers everything down to details from like wherever like he was three years old and something comes up and he get but they still like even cat they they're still like even catherine she's 12 not as much in terms of like this much time has passed or like i'm taking this long to just do whatever it, it's kind of like they that concept is not fully there yet but maybe we force that into people right we do like we, we yeah because when i went to italy you know everyone always would like joke about me and my family when i was younger like amanda's la di da like i just you know take my time to do the things i'm just like totally immersed in it and <laughs> I always felt like in America, it was a big problem because I was like constantly being agitated by people to like rush and to get the thing on time and like do it fast enough. And it would like get me, you know, all flustered. But then when I moved to Italy and I was studying there, it was like, I'm like, oh, these are my people. I feel like I'm like, <laughs> I'm with like the people that are like me. And, you know, like my teachers would get to class 15 minutes late and it wasn't a big deal. We, were, we would all just kind of get there and 
we would be like immersed in conversation about things and just be present with each other. And when class started, class started. And it was kind of like that for everything. Like there was no rush and everybody was a lot more relaxed. Mm-hmm. Like we were just watching, um, I keep watching this like over and over again, this documentary series Down to Earth on Netflix. My mom was watching it last night and they were in Sardinia and they were looking at this, this like these Italians, they all live to a hundred and he kept going on. They're all so relaxed. They're all so happy. They're all <laughs> thinking like, yeah, it's, they just aren't so rigid mm-hmm. over there. And then my husband will argue, well, that's why their economy is awful because they all nap in the middle <laughs> and they don't work as americans but it's like okay but americans are dying at like you know they're not living as long and you know they're all stressed out we have all this like heart disease and like all these and it's like stressful here it's um because i think there's like so many constructs of what you should be and what you have to be and what you're supposed to look like and what you're supposed to accomplish and in like this very specific timeline and it's like all an illusion that we're trying to smash ourselves into it just it doesn't feel, oh, it I, doesn't I, feel I agree. good it's, there's a difference in environment and what's considered you know on a sociological level acceptable etc yeah but but uh italians and americans still basically perceive time the same way they just oh, yeah, yeah. emotional like weight on it mm-hmm. yeah yeah and uh your husband might be right. Who knows? Um, but you know, no, he usually is about economic things. But I'm like, I don't care. <laughs> I know. I've, I've been to Italy five times, and if I could live there, I'd live there. And yeah. it, and a part of it is, yeah, I'm I'm I, I might drink my espresso pretty quickly, but you know, then I'm gonna go out and walk around for a while. You know. <laughs> Just, you know. And then I'm gonna stop at this little. Oh, there is a wine bar right across the street from the PD Palace that I go to whenever I go to Florence. <laughs> oh my God, you could, I could, maybe I'll die there. That would be a great place to die. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, anyway, anyway, anyway. But but and in fact, the the two most recent books I've read about time and the perception of time, etc. Both are by Italians. <laughs> That's funny. And they got the time to think about that kind of thing. <laughs> <laughs> and, and both these guys were the high research on longevity too. Yeah. Well, what? These guys both are high achievers. I mean, you know, one of them is probably in line for the Nobel. You know, it's it's they're they are not slouches. They are very well known in their field. And uh, one's a physicist and one's a neuroscientist. And it's uh, anyway. I feel like that, that's what that piece creates. Um, Adriana said it a long time ago. She was like, you know, what energy are you creating with? Are you creating with hustle energy? Because that's an energy of lack. Or are you creating with like an inspired energy? Because that's an energy of abundance. And I feel like when I was in Italy, I was, I was studying um, <laughs> creative writing, art, and herbal remedies, and like I was more prolific in the art that I created when I was there in that relaxed state. It just flowed out of me. I was like pumping out oil paintings and marble sculptures, and I just that? felt so inspired all the time because there wasn't that pressure to be or the pressure to do. It's almost like the pressure is what stifles the creative flow and I and that was the feeling of everyone everyone was like passionately in tune with the people that I with the people that I met there um you know the people who grew up there my family members everybody was just very like in tune it's just very different lifestyle it's very different yep and the, and the the uh, it, it it is different, and you can walk into a place. We were walking down a side street someplace. I don't remember what town it was in, and there and the the shop doors were open, obviously to invite us. And we walked into one shop, and it was this guy who did um, sculptures and creations in red clay. Some of them were clearly for tourists, you know. I mean, he was paying the rent, and some of them were his his creations. And this man stopped and talked to us for 45 minutes. He stopped working for 45 minutes and talked to us. I am hard pressed to think of a place where I could walk into in America where somebody, you know, who's, who's making whatever 
will stop yeah. and talk to you for 45 minutes. He talked to me about how, how his shop came to be, what he does. Uh, you know, I, I, for five euros, I bought a couple of posters and, and, and brought them home. And, you know, clearly those were, these were advertisement posters, but who cares? You know, yeah. this, this guy was, <laughs> was just amazing. And he showed me the, the two posters I bought. One was um, his drawings of his construct of Pinocchio. Another was uh, his drawings and construct and a retelling of the story of James Joyce's Ulysses. And, uh, you know, what a broad range of interest for this, this guy. <laughs> you know, he, he wasn't doing, churning out the clay vessels 16 hours a day. He had a life and, and his life showed up. Yeah. Work. It was wonderful. I think that we're getting a glimpse of that in America with this block. Reading hobbies, people are reading right? Because they don't have to spend two hours commuting to work. It's like you pop on to work on the computer and then you can like go and guard. Like all of a sudden everybody's got a garden. Everybody's getting a new pet. It, <laughs> we're getting a glimpse of a slower life here. And a lot of people are like, wow, that was pretty rough what I was experiencing before. Yes. It yes. doesn't have to be like that. <laughs> yes. Yes. You're here. My husband made bread a couple days ago. I mean, he hasn't done that in 15 years, maybe more. Yeah. Good. I now weigh two pounds more than I did a couple of days ago. <laughs> God, it was, he made challah. Oh my Lord, was it good? Yeah, pe people are cooking their own food again. Oh. Everyone's a bread baker now. Yes. <laughs> it's great. Yeah. And, and I'm struggling with my August or my summer because I'm not in my time out in Malta. <laughs> I know. Oh, Malta's right, similar, right, to Italy? Um, not really. There, there's no, there's no real chill. But like, because it's so small, everyone works hard, and then you still get to go chill out in the evening. Yeah, and just be, and you get wherever you need to be, in, like from the center of the island, especially the island I'm from. It's like ten minutes either direction. You're at some beach. So if you want to, a lot of people, they, you know, work and then you pack your dinner and just go sit with the family at the beach and you're there till like 9.30 at night, 10, oh, 10 o'clock, 10.30 at night. Do you nap? Just, some people nap and they used to close, some shops still closed. Well, Not all of Italy don't. is closed for nap time. Like some, some, some shops still close in the afternoon, but not almost... Most of them are now open, but what they're, they're changed? Still... Craziness. Mm. I mean, um, Malta, like over the years, I've been here 20 years and, and I keep going home like little by little. And I keep saying, why do they keep following America? Mm. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and people there don't get like, they don't get what I'm talking about. I remember um, this was a long time ago, I think like 15 years ago. And I went to the I was on the mainland in the city and there was a Ben and Jerry store. And I'm like, this makes no, like, why are they here? It's so stupid. And everybody's like, why? Get out and I'm like, we have really good ice cream. They don't need to come here. I mean, like <laughs> Starbucks in Italy. Who needs a Starbucks in Italy? You do not. I know, right? They're all over the place now. Oh. From the first time I went there till now. I couldn't believe the amount of McDonald's in Rome. I think right. McDonald's owns Rome. Right by the oh. Spanish steps, there's a McDonald's. I have never seen that was so well. Yeah, there's the so many time... McDonald's signs. I'm like, does McDonald's yeah. own Rome? It's well, depressing. I, it's close. It's close. I, once when we were in Rome and we were, we were at a cash machine, and uh, this woman came up and uh, asked us for directions to somewhere, and I said, you know, I'm sorry, we're not, we're not, we're not Romans. We're not from Rome. And she said, no one in this fucking city is from Rome anymore. And she walked away. <laughs> oh, couldn't find anybody who knew where anything was. I thought, that was interesting. But you know what? Up to when we're, we were there two years ago, last time in Rome, they yeah. still, August, peak season with tourists. And they still, their bus schedule yeah. was, they cut it because it's summer. Yeah. And, and I'm like, 
I was talking to a local, you know, like, and, and I'm like, that makes no sense. She's like, because <laughs> yep. the school, once the school no, no, ends, nobody works. once the school ends, they cut the bus schedule because they don't really need it. So if you're a tourist there, well, that's it. Suck yep. it up, walk, get a cab. <laughs> So in August, in Rome, it's tough to breathe in August in Rome, much less, you know, run around. Right, everyone leaves in August. And Florence, too. Yes. Oh, I love Florence. Oh, my Lord. Me, too. Oh. Oh, it's in well. either direction. <laughs> All right, enough. You, you know, I was supposed to go to oh. Rome and Florence in May. I'm so sad. And oh. Alitalia still has like thousands of dollars of our money because we oh, use all of our day. points to, you know, to travel, to get a better seat, you know, for sleeping, etc. I got to go back. I feel you on that. Yeah. Anyway, okay. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So who who is gonna lead the breathing and and the meditation? Because I am a firm follower on that one. Okay. Okay. What is Miss, you want to do it or Jackie? <laughs> All right. Somebody's got to volunteer. Oh, Jackie. Sure. Sure. Let's find Sorry, a I just ate a ton of cat hair. Oh. <laughs> On nature. Sit up tall or lie down wherever you're choosing to be. Take a full deep breath into your abdomen. And let it go. Do some alternate nostril breathing using our right hand, the right thumb to close the right nostril and the right ring finger to close the left nostril. Closing the right, take an inhale through the left. Close both. Exhale right. Inhale right. Close both. Exhale left. That's one full round. Inhale left. Close both. Exhale right. Inhale right. Close both. Exhale left. Inhale left. Close both. Exhale right. Inhale right. Close both. Exhale left. Continue like that at your own pace until you feel centered and settled and you can go into your meditation or concentration practice, <clears throat> remembering to end with your final breath out of the left side. I'll set the timer for 20 minutes and bring us back together at the end of that time.
gently bringing your awareness back to the room, to your space, bringing your hands to your heart. Namaste. 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 Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you so much. Thank, Thank you. you, Sue, for reading. Today. Namaste. Yes, Thank, thank you. you. Thank, thank you, Sue. So. Thank you. <laughs> thank you, Jackie. For well, <laughs> oh. there. Everybody have a wonderful day. You too. Thank you. Take care. Bye. Bye. Bye bye.